So welcome to InvestEd. So today, i-discuss natin yung company Frutas Holding Incorporated. Kasi may mga subscribers tayo na nag-request na i-review daw natin ito. Today, ang focus natin dito na yung history ng company, fundamentals ng company, value ng company ngayon, and also, ano yung opinion ko sa company. Okay? So bago tayo magsimula, kung bago ka pala sa ating channel, Huwag mo nga kalimutan na subscribe itong ating channel and hit the notification bell para maging updated ka sa mga bagong videos na lalabas dito sa ating channel. And also, huwag mo kakalimutan na like itong ating video. Okay? So kung ready na kayo, let's start and see you on the other side. Okay, so ano ba yung kinikater nitong company? Frutas is the largest diversified kiosk operator in the country. Okay, so ano ba yung kiosk? Yung man nakikita nyo, kita nyo food card sa SM or sa mga labas, no? ay yung tinatawag na kiosk. Company have a 1,068 stores nationwide. Frutas Holdings Incorporated have a 25 active brands. So in 2002, The first Frutas store was launched. In 2004 to 2011, they launched Juice Avenue, Buko ni Frutas, the Mango Farm, Black Pearl and Fruit, Black Pearl and Frutas Ice Candy. In 2012, they launched also the Buko Loco, Friends Fries, T-Rex, and House and House of Desserts. And fast forward to 2013, they launched the Halo Halo Island. And in 2015, they launched the or Jamaican. And meron na silang kabuuan na 260 stores. In 2016, they launched the Fancy Jan Lemon. Okay. And meron na silang kabuuan na stores na 414. In 2017, they launched the Home of Frutas, the PUB. And in 2017, meron na silang kabuuan ni store na 819. And in 2018, meron na silang kabuuan ni store na 930 stores. And nilunch nila yung Sabroso Lechon. And in 2019, meron na silang kabuuan na total stores na 1,068 stores. Nilunch nila yung Three Frenchmen and Heat Stroke Grill. Okay, so this is the history ng company. Okay, so ano naman yung positions ngayon ng company sa financials? Okay, so dito, uh, tatalakay natin kung ano yung advantage and disadvantage ngayon ng company pagdating sa financials. Tignan natin dito guys, yung revenue ng company from 2015 to 2019. In 2015, meron silang 3. Uh, 310 million pesos na revenue and pass forward to 2019 na mayroong 1.9 billion pesos na revenue na ang company. Okay? Now, kung titignan natin dito yung net income ng company in 2015 na sa 13.2 million pesos lang yung kanilang net income and fast forward to uh, 2019 na nasa 121.53 million pesos yung kanilang net income tan natin dito over the years na nag-grow yung kanilang revenue and net income. Now dumako tayo sa quarterly ng company para makita natin kung ano nangyayari sa kanilang revenue and net income. Na kung titingnan natin dito guys yung revenue ng company na quarterly basis. So nakikita natin dito in the second quarter of 2019 nasa 941.19 million pesos yung kanilang revenue and pass forward to the third quarter of 2020 na nasa 166.56 million pesos na lang yung kanilang revenue. So nakikita natin dito na sobrang nag-shrink down yung revenue ng company. Okay, na kung titignan natin naman dito yung net income ng company in a quarterly basis, in the second quarter of 2019, meron silang income na 51 million pesos And fast forward to the third quarter of 2020 na nasa negative 19.35 million pesos daw ng company. So that's a very, very high drawdown sa company. No? Kung titignan natin, dalawang quarter na silang down yung kanilang income. 
in the second quarter of 2020 and the third quarter of 2020. So anong bang uh, kadahilanan kung bakit nagdown to, no? Nagkaroon ng pandemic, eh, majority ng store na company na sa loob ng malls, kaya nakikita natin dito na sobrang laki ng down ng kanilang net income, no? So hangga't um, hindi nag-normalize yung at hindi nag-normalize yung foot traffic sa malls, talagang hindi pa babalik yung kanilang normal yung kanilang income. Nakikita natin dito na yung income ng company in the past quarters talaga nag-shrink down and nag-negative talaga. No? So, ito yung epekto ng pandemic sa kanila. Mas ano naman yung mga nakita kong advantage sa kanilang financials ngayon. Ngayon, kung titignan ko dito yung uh, big four numbers ko, no? yung kanilang revenue, net income, equity, for the past five years talagang mataas yung kanilang growth rate. No? So, for the past five years, mataas yung kanilang growth rate. Nga, kung titignan natin dito yung cash from operating activities, bakit tayo walang uh, laman dyan? Kasi kung titignan natin dito, so in 2015, wala silang uh, laman yung kanilang cash from operating activities. Umbisa tayo sa 2016 nila na nasa 54 million yung kanilang cash from operating activities. And fast forward to the uh, 2019 na nasa 100 85 million pesos na yung kanilang cash from operating activities. That's a positive side ng cash from operating activities. Okay, so in terms of big four numbers, nandito tayo sa stage na maganda tignan. Sa pang advantage ngayon ng company, yung kanilang debt to earnings ratio. Kung titignan natin dito, um, yung pinakamataas nilang debt to earnings ay nasa 1.4 years, yung kanilang debt to earnings. So meaning, Uh, ng debt earnings sa mga bago pa lang sa pag invest um, 1.4 years kay nilang punan yung kanilang uh, long-term liabilities gamit lamang yung kanilang net income. So, ang remember, ang gusto natin makita kapag nag-invest tayo o nagre-review tayo sa company ay nasa 3 pababa lang yung kanilang debt earnings. So, dito nakikita natin na yung pinakahayas nila ay nasa 1.4. Meaning, wala silang interest expense na kinikater masyado sa company. That's a positive sign, no? And also, isa pa nakita nating advantage ngayon sa company, yung kanilang current ratio. Kung titignan natin dito, yung current ratio ng company in annual ay nasa 3.93, while the quarterly ay nasa 4.46 current ratio. So, dito, sinasabi sa atin na walang liquidity problem ang company in the next coming year. Although nakita natin na, although nakita natin na bumaba yung kanilang net income, revenue but in terms of liquidity ng company talagang uh, nasa good condition pa rin naman itong company and also no sinasabi sa atin dito ng uh, current ratio na uh, 4.4 times kain lang punan yung kanilang current liabilities gamit lamang yung kanilang current assets okay so that's a very very good pagdating sa kanilang uh, balance sheet So, isa pa nakita natin na positive ngayon sa company, yung kanilang debt to equity. Kung titignan natin dito, in annual, yung kanilang debt to equity ay nasa 24%. In a quarterly ay nasa 20% yung kanilang debt to equity. Meaning, um, in every one peso na ginagamit ng company sa kanyang operation, 21, uh, 20% ng 1 peso ay finance lang by utang. So, mababa. Bakit? Bakit natin nasabi na mababa yung kanilang utang? Kasi ang gusto natin makita kapag nagre-review tayo ng stocks, ay nasa 40% pababa lang yung kanilang debt to equity. No? Pero dito, nasa 20%. So, kaya natin nasabi na mababa lang yung utang ng company. Now, dumako naman tayo sa weakness ng company no? or disadvantage ng company. Kung titignan natin dito yung free cash flow ng company for the past 5 years, Uh, hindi stable no yung kanilang free cash flow. Nakita natin na uh, positive, negative, negative, positive. So hindi siya stable no. So gusto natin makita syempre um, stable yung free cash flow. Kasi napakaimportante ng free cash flow no for me para sa akin no as an investors na tinitingnan ko yung free cash flow ng company. So anong bang ibig sabihin nitong free cash flow no para mas lalo nating maintindihan. So ang ibig sabihin nito um For example, nagbibigay ng dividend yung company. Tapos, uh, negative yung free cash flow ng company for the past 5 years. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, kung nagbibigay sila ng dividend, ang ibig sabihin nun, mangungutang lang sila para lang makapagbigay ng dividend sa mga shareholders ng company. So, that's a negative sign no, sa atin. Okay, so para mas lalo nating maintindihan kung anong ibig sabihin ng free cash flow, for example, um, 100% owner tayo ng company. Tapos, Um, yung free cash flow ng company, kunyari ay nasa 68 million pesos yung free cash flow. Ang ibig sabihin nun, 
Ito na yung para sa iyo no. It's either ipang-invest mo, pang-travel, ipang-improve mo sa business, whatever you want it to do no. Kung 100% owner ka ng company. So yun yung ibig sabihin ng free cash flow. Kaya napaka-importante na may alam natin kung ano yung free cash flow ng company for the past 5 years and also dapat Siyempre, dapat stable yung free cash flow ng company. And also, isang negative side pa na nakita natin, yung kanilang return on equity and return on invested capital. Kung titignan natin dito, uh, over the past 5 years, bumababa yung kanilang return on equity and return on invested capital. Uh, ayun yung ayaw natin makita na bumababa yung kanilang uh, yung dalawang yan, yung management analysis natin. Kasi napaka-importante sa investors na stable yan and talagang continuous na nag-grow yan no pero dito nakita natin na bumababa nang significantly no ayun yung isang negative na nakita natin tapang nakita natin na negative side sa company yung kanilang earnings per share versus sa free cash flow per share so nakita natin na walang data kasi nakita natin na for the first quarter talagang negative yung kanilang uh, earnings and yung free cash flow talaga ng company talagang uh, negative din. No? Kaya nakikita natin na walang laman yung earnings per share and free cash flow per share. So negative sign din also sa atin yan. No? Pinabaapan siya ng ating free cash flow yield. So walang data din. And isa, pa nakita nga, and isa pa nakita natin na negative side ngayon sa company, yung kanilang margins, yung uh, gross margin, net profit margin, operating margin. So walang data yung kanilang trailing 12 months or yung current data. So nakikita natin talagang sobrang naapektuhan yung company sa pandemic na nangyari sa atin ngayon. Okay na, dumako tayo sa valuations ngayon ng company. Kung titignan nyo guys, yung aking... Evaluation metrics na lang, walang laman, walang data, COL, BPIT, walang data. So, wala tayong pagkukunan ng information sa kanilang valuation. Nung ginamit ko yung EBIT to EBIT the valuation metrics, so nakakuha ako ng 0.95 pesos per share na intrinsic value sa company. Kung titignan natin dito, kung yun ang gagamitin natin, no, EBIT to EBIT the na valuation metrics, so, nakikita natin na overvalue talaga ang company. No? Nasa 1.49 pesos per share. Ngayon tayo nire-review natin yung company. Eh, yung, value, yung ating intrinsic value ay nasa 0.95 pesos per share yung ating valuation metrics. And also guys, no, sinusuportahan din yan ng ating multiple valuation from price to sales, price to free cash flow, and price to book. So sinasabi dito sa atin na ang company ay nasa overvalue in terms of these multiple valuations. Okay, so last 3 months ago, sinasabi dito na uh, Frutas Holdings confirmed that uh, President and CEO sold 25 million shares at 2 pesos per share. So nakikita natin na CEO nagbenta ng 25 million million shares no so nakikita talaga na kahit yung CEO nakikita niya na overvalue ang company so kaya yan, nagbenta siya ng 25 million okay now uh, what is my opinion no dito ngayon sa company for me hangga't uh, hindi umaayos yung hangga't wala pang maayos na vaccine sa Pilipinas and hindi pa uh, nagno-normalize yung food traffic sa malls talagang hindi pa babalik sa normal yung net income ng company majority ng kanilang uh, stores ay nasa malls. So, kaya masyado silang naapektuhan ng pandemic. Now, kung titignan naman natin dito yung future side ng company, itong article na ito pinablish noong uh, one, um, one month ago. So, sinasabi dito sa headlines na Frutas plans to increase annual revenue to 5 billion pesos and net income to 500 million pesos before 2025. So, yun yung plano nila. So, dito nakikita sa article na uh, in 2021, no, this year, magkakaroon ng strong rebound sa kanilang revenue and net income. So, let's see no, kung mangyayari yan. And also, the company wants to increase the net margin from around 6% in 2019 to 10% by end of 2025. So yung target average nila sa kanilang revenue growth ay nasa 30 to 40 uh, percent uh, in the end of 2025. Tingnan natin kung maabot ba nila, scalable ba, or kaya ba nilang maabot yung ganyang um, projections. Okay? Now, in last 25 days ago, uh, yung Frutas Holdings announced uh, Frutas Holdings uh, announces community store rollout. So dito, sinasabi dito na uh, the company secured 20 location for its community stores and its 
uh, and is in final lease negotiations on another 20 locations. But for now, for my valuation and financials ng na company, ang company ay nasa overvalue for me, no? So, I would rather stay away dito muna sa company. And, okay guys, so hopefully may natutunan kayo sa pagre-review natin sa company and maraming maraming salamat guys sa support niyo sa ating channel and continuous na nag-grow ang ating channel. Okay guys, so kung may, may mga gusto pa kayong ipa-review, ipa-research na company na in future, marami nagre-request sa atin na mag-review daw tayo ng US stocks. So, gagawin natin yan no, in the future. So, for the meantime, focus muna tayo dito sa ating merkado. Okay guys, this is Pessy Wire na nagpapaalalang invest wisely and see you on the other side. Hello guys, maraming salamat sa panonood. Sana marami kayo natutunan sa video na to. So kung hindi pa kayo nakaka-subscribe, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga videos na parating at marami pa kayo matutunan sa channel na ito. Maraming salamat!